On this episode, Eugene Rem stops by and talks entrepreneurship, catch, rumble, and we had a couple of calls that were fucking legit. This is Gary Vay Nurchuk, episode 303 of the Ask Gary V Show. I'm excited, uh, you could tell by my energy, a couple things that are exciting me. One, a couple of my favorite alumni are back in the building because two very handsome men work for another handsome man and he's here, <laughs> Eugene. Uh, I'm gonna allow you to introduce yourself to the audience in a minute. Amazing entrepreneur behind some of my favorite brands in culture right now, Catch. Rumble and other things. Uh, we'll, we'll get into his origin story in a second. Instagram, Facebook, you guys are live, but ultimately why I think I'm most pumped is I just tasted Empathy Rosé for the first time. Our master plan is in motion. I'm very excited uh, and uh, this should be a really good episode. So Eugene, for the Vayner Nation that's listening, uh, why don't you tell them who you are and, what, and how you uh, synthesize uh, your origin story. How I how I arrived Who here. are you? Who yes. am I? All right, well, Gary, thanks for having me. Yes. Appreciate it. I've never seen such an energetic group of people in an office before. <laughs> this is crazy. Thank you. Um, my name is Eugene Rem, uh, co-founder of Catch Hospitality Group. We own Catch in New York, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Playa del Carmen, and Lexington Brass. Also co-founder of Rumble Boxing, which is here in New York, LA, DC, Philly, and San Francisco with a lot more coming there. And uh, I came here via Russia from New Jersey, which I don't think would be interesting to any of your viewers because they wouldn't know where that was about. But uh, came to the States in 1980 and grew up in Bergen County, New Jersey and uh, worked my way to Hofstra University and then New York City at 22 and started in the mailroom. How old mail are you now? 40. It's really crazy how similar our backgrounds are. Yeah. Like really kind of scary similar. It like is, it is. Soviet Union in, during a, you know, have you, by the way, did you know how few people got out during our era? I, did. I actually Googled it okay. uh, uh, during Thanksgiving with my parents. It was in the hundreds of thousands. Yeah. It's nuts. And they were all like homies too. They all like knew each other. I feel like they were all like St. Petersburgians. Did, did, you, did you have family in America? You I, had to have some, your parents had to have somebody. We had a, um, a cousin, my cousin and my, my, uh, my father's sister was here, but we had to stop in Italy for like th yeah, three, four months or Did something. Did you go in Austria for a few weeks too? No, I don't you think that was, in, that was, a, we, I know. That's we how they changed in 80 compared to 78? That's right, that's <laughs> right. We, I know I know. It's how I love pizza and pasta because we, we lived right above a pizza store. So um, I remember that and then we came, I don't remember, but I'm told that, but it's crazy, man. It's crazy. And by the way, a lot of successful people coming out of that little, 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 little yeah. sample of people. It was it's pretty true. dope. But it's also interesting, what's interesting about you, and I talk about it often, and. and We've become friendly in recent years and a lot of it, you know, you've been, you know, I'm super happy to have you on the show because you. sometimes you'll ping me randomly and be like, oh, I like that podcast, I like that podcast. So it's super, we become friendly. Kids that I liked a lot that worked at Vayner that like the machine was fucking up. So I'm like, hey, go to it. Like, like it's, there's so much warmth in here. Yeah. But what's interesting is I often say like, I was unusual because I was such a bad student when all of our contemporaries need to be, but like, listen, Hofstra's way better than Mount Ida College, but it's no fucking Yale. You no, must no, have no. been a shit student too. I was a, I was a D student, I was a C minus <laughs> student. And by the way, there's Hofstra and then there's a new school at Hofstra where it's like if you can't get into the regular Hofstra. That's where you went? You, yeah, they Dude. send you to the new school. I was able to get back up to the regular Hofstra, but let me tell you, it's, it's smaller really, classes, it's really limited. It's crazy yeah. like how bad of students we were. Yeah, because te the way people Did teach. You, were you baseball carded out? I thought I was, we talked about I this. I was baseball carded out. I was flea marketed really? out. My father had a sand selling the Russian dolls and he gave me 20% of and his stand. Matroshkas and the am and the amber and all that all that crap. And um, he gave me 20% of his table. But for me, it was, a, it was an opportunity to hang out with my dad and it was an opportunity to sell some stuff. And it, and it kept me busy because that was my sport. That was, that was my sport, so it was like, I didn't understand what it really all meant because my dad couldn't sew it up for me together, but now looking back on it, you're like, all right, when it was cold and they had a snow day, you go knock on doors and you shovel, and you shovel snow because that's how you make some cash. And all I really, money was freedom, period. If I got money, I could do things. If I got no money, my parents weren't giving it to me. So that's how I connected this whole thing. All the young hustlers on right now, make sure you put your phone numbers. Andy K is sitting by the computer ready to take phone numbers. We're gonna do call in pretty soon. So, you know, 
here's where our stories deviate. You're yep. much cooler than me. Definitely not. So yes, you definitely, definitely are. Definitely not. You definitely are. <laughs> I, I go liquor store, you go into the nightlife scene That's in New right. York. Yes. How did that all break out? Real simple, moved to New York. I was a bartender in college and uh, I, I took a crap job in ad sales, hated my life. And I moved to the, uh, the, um, the storage room at a fashion and celebrity PR firm. But I knew you could wear sweatpants and I knew you could listen to hip hop. And I knew that like, and that was really it. And I was like, well, this must be for me. And I always used to walk down the streets of New York and be like, who is walking around in a t-shirt and jeans at noon while I'm in this crap suit at this crap job? And I was like, this can't be. So really humbling, 22 Gs a year. But I had bought some houses in college with my bartending money that we started flipping. So I had enough cash to hold me over. And that's the money I used so I can live in New York. So I started going out. I made my own business card in a company that had no business, that wouldn't allow me to make my business card because I wanted to get into the clubs. So I started doing that. They said, hey, you can work the door for free at our events on the weekends if you want. And I was like, absolutely. And they thought I was nuts, but I wanted the access. So I started meeting people. And I did that for about 18 months and then 9-11 hit and then the, you know, the PR market just dried because nobody wants to talk about so-and-so wearing Jimmy Choo's after 9-11. And then I, I took a job, uh, I got lucky, I got a job with Randy and Scott Gerber uh, who owned the W Hotel Bars and that was my first job. And I did special events for them but they let me have a comp account. And on the weekends I could go to my other friend's places and pay for shit or I can go to these places, invite people and not pay for shit. And that's how it kind of started. So that was your leverage. That was my leverage. That was my, that was my equity that I had with you were people. Young and your contemporaries, and you guys could, you could, you could, in essence, entertain at the. I could at, entertain at, nice places. at a place that didn't have anyone else entertaining. While my friends were working at the coolest places, I wouldn't say that they were the coolest places on earth, but they were certainly good enough. But the experience that I could personally create for them would be better and that's how I kind of worked it and one by one and I worked for Randy and Scott for two years then a gentleman named Steve Hansen who's like a G in New York and if Star? you don't uh, no it was uh, Be Our Guest Be Our Guest um, he sold it but um, you know he had 20 restaurants and I go to work for him I'm 25 years old now and I open and he crush at meatpacking he was at me. He told me what the meat packing was. He said, I'm opening up the space in the meat packing, this little V. I took a Saturday night off. I just walked around there and I saw all these bars. And then you saw some like, you know, you saw meat lockers and then you saw trannies and drug dealers. And you're like, well, this must be where it's at if you're getting a little bit of everything. And I, I became the director of promotions for his company at 25. He drilled meat packing, right? He drilled everything. He yeah. drilled New York City. And he, I never met a man that worked as hard as he did, he worked 22 hours a day. He would he would be able to respond to my email at the end of the 4 a.m. shift, and he would start at those emails at like 6 a.m. and he would go. What's he up to these days? He um well he sold he sold be our guest to Starwood, and then Starwood sold it to my current partner, <laughs> uh, Landry. So it's it's come full circle, which is super interesting. But um I, I think he, you know he bought a hotel and he buys a building. But I think he's I think he's semi retired and how old is he? Um, living his I think I don't know I'm not sure exactly. I, I think he's 60 ish. Okay. But um, but yeah, he was a beast. And I gotta say, we talk about mentorship a lot. You talk about mentorship a lot, but I probably spent a total of 72 hours with him in two years. But I can tell you those 72 hours with that one man set shaped. the tone, shaped everything. So it's not about like, oh, I worked for this guy so for let, two let's years. let's talk about this. This is very meta. There's a, re there's a young man sitting, two, like two people behind you, who literally nice called, who literally called, talk about meta on meta on meta, who literally called in, on an Ask Gary Vee type thing, but it was just by myself. We had this kind of like fun moment. He was great. And I just like liked him and I said, come in. And here he is, this is the day he came in. And, I just, and I just met with him before this. Yeah. And I basically told him to work for Dave East, the hip hop artist, for yep. free, right? And this is like my biggest, like I believe in this the most. People are listening right now. They're about to call in, put in your phone number for Eugene. We're gonna get to your calls in a minute, especially the hustlers. And what I mean by hustlers, you've been listening to, you know my backstory, you've been listening to Eugene's. Eugene is an, I mean this, and we don't even know each other well enough for me to almost paint this compliment, but. I'll but take it though, gonna, thank you, appreciate it. You're gonna take it. it. Appreciate I'm, it. There, there haven't been a lot of people I've met in the last five years that, I, that there's this delta, X and Y axis, of me genuinely liking the human being and me believing in their actual skill set. You sit on a very, again, we've only spent, 11, six, seven hours together. Yep. But it's, it's already there for me. So here you are, you're, you've been successful by all accounts. 
I personally believe that you're about to get really successful Thank because you. I think you're patient and hungry and doing the right things. And even if the global economy takes a step back, I just, I can see it. Yes. I know exactly who you're gonna be at 71 and I'm looking forward to having more stories with okay. you. Okay, just wanna be around at 71, but yes. But you're sitting here and telling everybody the 72 hours I spent with this person shaped, you know, you had your natural DNA, the hustler, and yeah, yeah. shit fine. I just wish more people heard you and this is why I'm making the big to-do here. 72 hours. Now, all of you who I tell in your 20s when you're doing dick shit nothing with your fucking life, when I tell you to spend two hours a day on your couch doing dick shit nothing and DM everybody you admire and say to them, I've got fucking time, you're busy as shit, I will fucking do anything. Eat shit for 15 hours a week for free for you a, once in a blue moon, somebody says yes, yeah. and that will change your life. Happen to you, <laughs> happen to D-Rock, like happen to Andy, this is yeah. real. But it's, it's funny, but people will pay for college, but they don't want to not get paid to go do work. How'd you two get your job at Vayner, originally? So uh, Casey Neistat video, DM someone that he knew, put me in touch with one of the recruiters, ended up here. And how long were you here? Two years. Right, and then that led to this. That's right. Which is fitting you perfectly, right? Like, I don't, like, I just wish fucking, and you, how'd you get it? Oh, I, I was at a non-paying internship. Um, my boss, when that internship was up, introduced me to John Troutman, and here we are. I just, you know, it's just so real to me. It's like, I look at all of you, like, I just, I, you know, it's so crazy, like, you better be fucking listening. And everybody who's listening right now, you gotta just ask. Yeah. You just gotta ask, and you just have to have something to offer. And when you're a youngster, like all of you were, it's this, like you have nothing to offer but your fucking grind. But that's the funny thing because when people go for a job, they're gonna be like, how much are you going to pay me? What are you gonna do for my future? And that's where they've got it backwards. They actually have to say, this is what I can do for you. And for that, you should pay me something. But for now, I can do this for you. Allow Gee, me to I help you. And that's, that's like a miss. People think I'm a dick. I'm telling you, I genuinely believe the people in the top of their crafts are gonna get people offering them to pay once people start putting all these pieces together. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, college, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. Your first business that you start, you can make a $200,000 mistake before you sneeze. I don't like giving people daps. I'm telling you right now, I'd have a tough time saying no to work for Jeff Bezos for a month for free. Right now, at the If you could stand next to Jeff Bezos, I, I would take that job right now too. I would love to. I'd love to see what he, the game he plays. It's the I game need a I, fucking hour. <laughs> Like I'll do it for a month because I committed, but like I need a fucking hour and I just wish more people, let's get phone numbers. Uh, so okay. like, man, I'm sorry to stop you in your story, but fuck man. Well, let me Please, let me say this. Like, knock yourself out. Digital marketing. Yes. I didn't know a goddamn thing about digital marketing two years ago. We go to Open Rumble. I, I, we don't use digital marketing and right. catch in a traditional yep. sense. Yep. I don't know the cost per acquisition. Yep. Yep. I don't know anything about yep. retargeting. Yep. All that stuff you know yep. about. Chris, who's the guy who runs all of our, our digital marketing, I meet him. And two months later, I am speaking on a level as good as my friends who run advertising agencies and I just needed to be next to him and he needed to learn about brand, which is what I do, the authentic, the real, and I needed to learn about what he did and together, that's what made Rumble super successful, but not one without the other, but if I didn't have a guy like that. Math and art. I'd be, structure and culture, that's the way I look at it. Great. Like It's all I, the same shit, gray and black and white. Fucking data and fucking, it's all the same shit. It's yeah. yin and yang, in balance, in harmony, That's and everybody right. thinks it's one or the other. And if if he won because he learned something, I won because I learned something, and that's the other thing. People, young people need to realize it has to go both ways. It has to be symbiotic, it has to work. It's just, you know, like you were saying earlier, just like, like oh right, there's like, you've been hanging out with a bunch of the people on the team, you're like, oh right, there's work in between. Yeah. People are getting confused by Instagram. Yeah. They see the fucking blow up swans and the rose and fucking Coachella and they just think like, like most people aren't trust fund babies. That's right and, they're, and they forgot because 2007 wasn't too long ago and then 2008 all those jobs disappeared and people I had to wait. reset. I can't wait for it to reset because then too. people are gonna get real jobs again but it, it's interesting because now you have all these startups with these big budgets and they're paying people this big money. That's not gonna last and people are gonna have to get real jobs. Ask everybody where the A&R where the A people are from, from 20 years ago that were with, a, with an artist 25 deep, they're gone. The amount of 49 year olds right now that are executives in big companies who can tell you at 22, you know, they were worth $8 million on paper is unlimited. Yeah. 
people just don't do their history. No. There's a very big reason why my report card's D's and F's except for one <laughs> class, history. That's funny. It really, really matters. It matters, and, and, it, and it's, it's very interesting to understand that if you pay attention to the people that do the work and then the people who don't do the work, the history lesson will repeat itself and repeat over, itself and, and repeat itself. It's super simple. I used to understand people like philosophy class. I didn't get it. Now I find philosophy super interesting because the, the strategies and the principles of it are the same. It's super interesting. So what's on your mind these days? Like, like knowing this is an entrepreneurial audience, like what's like, what are you about now? Like, how are you thinking about, you know, you're, you're scaling these two companies. Yeah, um, I'm, 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 trying to, I'm trying to keep it real. Quite honestly, I'm trying to keep it real in a very unreal world. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to match authentic experiences in a place where people are trying to do a lot of unauthentic things. You got these micro influencers and this person and that person doing all these things and none of it are real. And I'm trying to just do honest work. I'm trying to do honest work. I'm trying to do it in a creative way. And it's very hard. It's How was very the Vegas challenging. opening? I know that was recent for Cap. The Vegas opening was awesome. You know, it was, it was really great. And by the way, Randy Gerber, who I worked for um, 15 years ago, he, he owns Casamigos Tequila Now, <laughs> did fantastically well. And you know, from those relationships, he did his opening party with us. So he, himself, George Clooney, Cindy Crawford. And that's a real honor. You're 40 years old, you worked for this guy. 16, 17 years ago, and for him to, have to throw his event Which with is us. Which a big event, right? It's a Hollywood. big event, yeah, it was, it was the whole thing. It was a thousand people. It was, they flew in on a private airplane. They did a, a massive promotion around it, and that's just priceless. And those are the moments where you pinch yourself for a minute. But you gotta remember, like, those are just moments. Just like every time I've ever gotten something cool in the press, I don't believe it on the really like, oh, you're the best thing that ever happened, just like I won't believe it on the worst thing that ever happened. I really try to Stay in the middle. stick it in the middle because if you did, I, I, I dare you to get one of these guys in this office to do a New York Post, the hottest next this, and go after 12 months and see if it even exists. It's probably a 90 to one of failure to success. So you really, I think people, if they're thinking about like keeping their success going, be authentic, stay real. It's funny, my brother and I have this sports agency and I keep telling them, the day you got drafted is the day the work actually starts. Everybody thinks, it's like VC funding. Everybody used, there's this great clip of me on the internet where I was on this like Bloomberg show, it was about like funding and every company got funding and the crowd's cheering. Oh, and oh, you yeah. remember this? And the one company goes, we didn't get funding, we just decided to make a, like a business and we're getting paid and the audience is dead silent. I lose my shit. I'm like, see, this is why everything's fucked up. I didn't, you know, I had to be, I had to be nicer work. than that. Remember? Yeah. I think it's from Damon, when you went to Damon John's talk. Like, yeah, I brought up that story, but like that clip is a Bloomberg like tech stars show. That's what it's from, Andy. Bloomberg Remember? Stars, and I was pissed. Everyone, like everyone celebrates the wrong shit. We raised $8 million, celebration. No motherfucker, you just gave up a big oh. chunk of your business and now you have to execute. Yeah, and now the I next trade, yeah. got, I got drafted, I'm like, cool, but now you have to actually play. Yeah. And like almost everybody doesn't make it. And, th and that, like, th th that's interesting. I know, like page six just said, there it is. I'm pissed. <laughs> so like that, yeah, that you know like one meal at a time one class at a time you post page six saying you're the hottest you've watched over 20 years that place not around 12 months later doesn't happen and when you raise money and that's the other thing everyone's Andy, like let's oh. get a phone call go ahead keep going Eugene. I understand when you raise money and you think you've done it no you just got started and now you have a much higher opportunity of failure than you did five minutes ago and you have other ago. voices that's right you gotta answer to Lambert or whatever you know like, yeah it's real it's real. It's real. If, if it's, it's not real, if you do great. If you do great, it's all roses. Who's this? Westfield's North Carolina. Westfield's the name. His name's Wes. This is Wes. Wes, this is Gary Vaynerchuk. Hey, Gary. How are you? Very good. Say hello to Eugene. Hey, Eugene. How's it going, man? Very well, my man. Nice to meet you. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. What is your question, my guy? So, pretty straightforward. Um, I basically started an event rental company. 
basically doing like bounce houses, tables, chairs, water slides, slip and slides, all the fun stuff about a year and a half ago. And it really kind of ramped up. Like it started as like, oh, let's just kind of make a couple extra hundred bucks. And now like we're getting, you know, pretty close to six figures. So, um, but I'm starting to get some competition in the area that has basically popped up out of nowhere, copying my pricing, buying the exact same like units I have and, and copying, you know, all my social media stuff that I'm throwing out there. So I wanted just some advice on basically, you know, how to keep crushing it, but also, you know, not to really care that that competition's kind of popping up and copying everything I'm doing. Dude, you're, Wes, you're fucking set. Anytime somebody's copying you, you have the leverage. Everybody cries, I love when people, people only copy me because I give away all my shit for free. I vlog all day, live stream all day, give away all my advice all day. It's mainly because I want people copying me. If somebody's right. copying you, you fucking won. The problem is, you can't rest on your fucking laurels and if you're thinking that somebody's copying you is fucking you up, you're starting to rest, my man. You just gotta make sure you're not a one trick, you gotta make sure you're not a one trick pony. If you're doing something and that's the only thing you can do and some dude follows you, then you're not that then great. Then you deserve to lose dick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's the punchline. Right. Like if you're, if you're so copyable that if somebody copies it, that it fucks up your game, you deserve to lose. That's actually how it plays out. Elevator die. Elevator die. Absolutely. And 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 Wes, Absolutely. I'll tell you the thing is is like you know you capture something right like I mean back to what we were talking about earlier. Somebody opens a big time big restaurant in the meatpacking district. They're crushing. What do you think happens next? That's right. Somebody else fucking buys another building and they open one. If that person starts crying that that happened, they always lose. I see this every day. Like nothing is ownable. I love when people hit me up on social or email or DM. They're like, yo. I need to copyright my idea or I need to trademark my idea. I'm like, motherfucker, you think this is 1984? That shit's over. This is about execution. There's no fucking original ideas. And oh, by the way, bro, you didn't fucking invent rentals and fucking slip and slides either. Oh, absolutely not. So stop. And, and, and so I think, I, go ahead. I, I think I've seen that this year and, and we really got rejuvenated this year to really start branching into other areas that none of the competition in my area are going to, you know, keep it fresh and to really start to, you know, give offerings that, you know, hey, that's it. brand new, fresh to the area that, you know, hey, they're gonna have to come along and copy those if they want them. And but, I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you, right, absolutely. Just I'll, I'll tell fresh. you what, what runs through my mind. Success often leads to complacency, right? Absolutely. And I think what you just went through a cycle of is like when I heard that you just said we got rejuvenated, you got rejuvenated because competition rejuvenated you, not you rejuvenated yourself. And that's okay, but that's a lesson you need to learn. Does that make sense? Absolutely, 100%. And I, w I would just add this. I, I think about if you think about your competition and you think too much about them, it's like a pickpocketer tapping you on the shoulder. You look to your left and they're stealing your wallet to the right. Focus on your own wallet, focus on your own stuff and don't allow yourself to get pickpocketed by some dude tapping you on the shoulder. Stay focused on your stuff. And like Gary said, don't get distracted. Stay true to what you're doing and you're gonna be great. Wes, the worst thing going on in my life right now is that people think I know who they are. Right. Like I'm in, I'm out and about, right? And I'm at the Super Bowl, I'll be in Charlotte for the NBA All-Star, I'll go to Eugene's, very trendy places and there's very special people there and I'm being introduced and people are starting to know who I am because of what's happening in my life and I'm devastated, this is not a joke. This is the single thing I stress about on earth right now. I spend no time, not a minute, knowing what anybody on earth is doing except my audience responding to my shit. Thus, when I'm out in public, and they're like, hey Gary, you know Johnny Magoo? And I'm like, fuck. Like clearly <laughs> everyone knows who Johnny Magoo is. I don't want to come off as like egotistical and a dick. So I'm like, you know, yeah. I don't, and I don't want to come off and be like, yeah, but then be off inauthentic. Literally, this is not a joke, bro. The number one anxiety I have right now is I almost don't know who anybody is on earth because I'm so right. in my own shit and I'm telling you right now, more people need to do that because if you're worried about anybody else, that's a minute that you're taking away from your customer. Instead of like looking at them copying your social, call every customer that you've ever had and say thank you and ask them if they need anything. Absolutely. Cool, good luck Absolutely. bro. Thank you man. Hey, let's do another one, the energy is perfect. Eugene, on that note, um, let's talk about Rumble for a minute. All right. Um, how is the boxing, you know, these 
one thing I'm curious about, how are you thinking about this? You're too smart to not know this truth. Right now in America, over the last half decade, it's been very clear that the exercise trends have been popping yep. and then fading pretty quickly. Cycles like, have been going fast. Yeah. How do you think about that when you think about Rumble in the fact that whether it's Orange Theory or Soul Cycle yeah, yeah. or, you know, clear, I, you're, I just know you enough even in, in the limited time, you have to be thinking about like, okay, how do I build something that's a marathon run that's right. that isn't just playing on this trend? It's not a fad, it's iconic. So that's you, right. You gotta do iconic type shit. You gotta do stuff that is better every single day, and day in and day out. I will say this though. Please. Sushi has been around for hundreds of years. You used to be in a shitty little room with a shitty little guy and you didn't see anything. All of a sudden, place like Nobu put some house music, some cool lighting, and some sauces on the stuff and rejuvenates the brand. But the authenticity of sushi was always there. Boxing. I'm a buyer. Boxing, so same so shit. Me. It's been around for so hundreds of years. African American, white people, Irish people, rich people, poor so people. Me. It shifts. UFC. It goes to something else. It's always going to be there. And more importantly, it's a damn good time. It's a damn good workout. And it works. So me. All right. I believe you. That's all the boxes. There is that. Who's this? Christine. Christine? It's Christine. Christine, it's Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm on with Eugene. Please say hello. Hi, Hi Gary. How are you? I'm super well. Say hello to Eugene. Hey, Eugene. How are you? Good. How are you? What's going I am on? Awesome. I'm so stoked you guys call me. Gary, can I please fly to New York and buy you lunch? One no. <laughs> please. No, please, I mean, please, I'm please, fucking please, busy. Please. Like, lunch takes time. Oh, my like, God. You're fucking busy. I'm fucking busy. Okay, let me lay down but for you But I didn't ask guys, you. You asked me, Christine. <laughs> please, please, please. <laughs> ask please, your, let's like, see how good your question is. How good my question is. Okay, listen. Let me, let me lay this down. I found you, Gary, on Facebook a couple years, like two years ago. You were standing in front of a dumpster telling a story <laughs> about how other people's opinions are trash. They're yes. fucking trash. Yes. Let me tell you, that changed my life, Gary. You changed my life with that statement. And I just want to thank you because my you changed my life. I started my business 18 months ago. 50 Donico on Instagram. If you would follow me, I would die. I'm going to follow you right Donico. now. You got me hyped. What is I'm that? A little, I'm, I'm a little, it's a little cop logo holding a donut. It's genius, right? So I started my little donut shop 18 months ago. I'm grossing over 500K a year. Wow. I just opened my second oh, Hold on, hold on. You're firing me up because because <laughs> I, want, I, like, I like what's going on with Justin's face. Hold on, hold on. Yes. You, 18 months ago, I'm in the, I'll am never forget that. I was on a flight. I read something as we were landing that pissed yep. me off like no business. I ran yep. off the plane. I was pissed because D-Rock was taking a few minutes to get off the plane. Cause, yep. And I could feel my energy of like my anger, excitement, need to talk yep. fading. So like we couldn't wait. So I was like, fuck it. Let's just do it in front of this dumpster. I, yeah. It's amazing how truth always wins. So you see that video. <laughs> it changes your mindset and allows you to start a business? Is that what happened? Yeah, because I've, people, I've owned bakeries in Sarasota for a long time, I'm in Sarasota, Florida, and other, like the last caller called in, other people's always starting stuff up, everybody's copying your business, so I wanted to do something that would take off, that would fucking light and take off, and that's what I needed, and that's what I need for my life. And so I saw that video, and there's this guy, I call him a keyboard warrior here in town, and he was writing shit about me online, telling everybody I was a hack, and it pissed me off. And so I saw your video and that was it. That was my mindset for the past 18 months is that those people are trash, but then you've been preaching lately about listening to your customers and how important their opinions are. And if they're telling you that you're doing a shitty job, so I walk a fine balance yes, between but real, those two real, streams real, of your opinion. That's exa- By the way, that is the contradiction, right? Listen, yes. like, there, you know, everybody always says to me, like, Gary, if you, you know, that, there's that classic line, like, if I listened to my customers, I would have made faster horses and not made a car. But then there's, like, tone death. That's exactly right. It's in that balance. But let me tell you one thing. Those keyboard warriors, as we like to call them, they're not your yep. fucking customers. They're people yep. that are pain, they're people that are hurting inside and the only yep. outlet that they understand is trying to drag somebody into their misery. And you, and you, exactly, and you know what else they are? There are people that are sitting on the fucking sidelines because they don't have the balls to jump at the game. Yeah, but, but I'll say this, <laughs> but I'll say this, Christine, <laughs> but I'll say this. One of the reasons why I'm so happy is I don't have that same level of anger that you're spitting yeah. right now, which right. I love, by the way. I love yeah. it because it's a motivator. Believe it yeah. or not, and it's fun to be sipping it, and wait a minute, I have a funny feeling you did not buy empathy wines. Tell the truth right now. If you lie, you will die. Did you order empathy wines? Did I what? Did <laughs> I you kidding. order 
Empathy Wines. Did you go to empathywines.com and order a subscription? Do not lie. No, are you kidding me? I'm a single mom, yo. I gotta You're doing 500,000 in fucking revenue. I Can I get 83 I'm fucking dollars? Mom. Can I get I'm 83 dollars? My, kid, my kid's dad don't give me shit. I gotta pay for all of my money. Get the fuck me? out of here. I, you, you're I buying that me. That if you don't order Empathy Wines, there's no prayer for lunch. Okay, I'll go buy it. Okay, listen. I'll go buy Empathy Wines today if you let me buy your lunch. Nope, but we're gonna Let's start with we're gonna start with this trade. You're gonna go buy I'll bring Empathy. You donuts. You're gonna well, I'll I do like donuts. donuts. I do like donuts, but on my heaviest this morning, oh, I tipped it. Like I gotta fucking get focused. I'm fasting today, but oh a little bit God. of wine. Listen to me. You okay. need to order Empathy Wines. I'll give you a follow. We'll start building our relationship slowly. Sounds good. Good. All right. Like what's your see, question? I like to date slow. I like to date slow. Even though I know you're married, but you're so protective. So like, I like to go slow anyway. Just like business relationships. I like to like. Good. So know, dip my toe in the water first. What can we answer for you? Awesome. So scalable growth, um, franchising or company-owned stores. Great I've question. had a, people coming at me right and left with offers. What's it's the name of the, What's the name? What's the name of the of the company? Because I want to make sure everybody hears it. Five O Donut Co. in Sarasota, Florida. Five O Donut Co. That's fucking fresh, actually. Yeah. You want us all over? Everyone's but, like, yeah. Go look, I've got I've got outlines of like chalk dead people on the floor holding the donut. I've got a mugshot wall with a photo booth. You can come in and take your mugshot and photo booth and send it out on your Instagram, your Facebook. So basically, my customers are creating ads for me every time they walk in the door. I've got little cop siren lights all How over many, the place. How many? And you have and you have what? One location. Two locations currently. Both in Florida? Yeah, I opened my first location one year. I opened my first location at the end of May 2017 and then in summer of 2018, a year later, I opened my second location. Nick Dio just followed you. I'm looking at your account. <laughs> yeah, look at my Insta. It's fucking We're doing donut You guys are doing products. real good product porn. So what, really what, good. Yeah. what's the debate between franchising and owner operator? What are you trying to figure out? Figure out the best way to scale growth. Is they both work, by the way. They both, they like, both work. This is historically correct. They both work. It becomes a self awareness game. Of how you, dope okay. you are. You have to understand or, how dope you are, or you have to understand whether you, you like. Want, yeah. What you like. Like, I'll be honest with you. Like, I'm weirdly, like, I'm going from not wanting to have lunch with you to wanting to be yeah. your business partner. Like, you better stay on the yeah. phone here. I'm like looking at Phil Toronto. I might send, Phil Toronto might be coming to Florida to see you. Garrett, can I tell you, if you check your DMs, I've sent you DMs saying, Garrett, please be a business partner. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Like, like, like I actually, let me tell you, I'm obsessed like with my, donuts. Like when was that? last time you had a donut? No, no, I, I, I don't, I haven't, like, hey. I'll, I'll eat, no, 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 Eugene, oh, please. Eugene, I, no, 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 I, like, yeah, I, I see, a, I see, I you, eat, you eat no, no. sashimi, you eat healthy, I I've do, seen it. I do, but the, when I go, when I am willing to escape, yes. it is always baked goods. Okay. Like baked yeah. goods are always when I want to escape. And like, yeah. I had a muffin in LA like two days ago and it was fucking amazing. I have never seen yeah. Gary eat anything other than healthy food well, every single you have time. really good food. Again. Yes. By the way, anybody watching, you have to go to Catch. It's in every fucking location. You don't have to, but if you want no, no, to, you, you can't should say that. <laughs> no, I think. Come on, come on. All right, why don't we do this? I want to have a business okay. meeting with you at Catch with Phil Toronto in the next 60 days. 45 minutes, me, you, and Phil Toronto at Catch. One objective, possibly being Garrett. business partners. Amazing, I would Done. totally be down. I got you, I got it Garrett, I'll send you an email right now, and I'm going to buy my wine after I get home from the grocery store. You better or that meeting's not gonna happen, see ya. All right, Eugene. <laughs> What's up? I feel weird about her. I think she might have something. Five I don't get the no. idea of like dead people though in mug shots on Who the floor. Gives a fuck? I, don't I don't get the idea of like <laughs> supermodels boxing. You fucking hacked it. Hey, um, I, follow, I follow Giselle. I don't have to make that rule up. All right, Eugene, we've got a few minutes because okay. I see Tyler getting antsy. I, I could see him through the mirror. Yeah, he looks he's antsy. He's stressed. What? I want to make sure we get across anything that you kind of, you know, you thought about this. Like, is there anything that is on your mind? Anything you want to share? Anything we can No, I'm, I'm, look, I'm excited to be here. I loved, I love working with young people. By the way, the two people that used to work at your office that work here, I called you. I said, look, I need some young hustlers and I want people with growth and you, and you handed me two and guys. And by the way, on that note, I apologize, Eugene, for everybody watching, if you own a business, if you're running a company, one thing I always say, like obviously I always want to keep everybody. However, I ha you ha if you own a business, if you actually want to bring value to people, you have to watch the people that work for you. There are times when it's, I when I look and it's obvious to me that different people need different jerseys 
than the one they currently have in my place where I know they can shine. Plus it's moments in time, I'll be very honest with you. Both of the guys, I'm looking denim in the face, if they came to Vayner in 2009, it would have been different. Yeah. But when they were in the system at that time, through the serendipity, it's fucking serendipity. I think way too many people are selfish with talent, right? And then more importantly, like don't realize how the world works. It, like this couldn't make me feel better. I agree. And I gotta say this, it's, it's hard to find talent. So if, if I'm sitting here talking about Catch and Rumble, they're both super exciting brands. I, I, I'm just creating experiences, quite honestly. So when people ask, how do I do better than the next guy? I don't know. I can buy the same tuna that you can buy. I can buy the same vodka that you can buy. I could buy the same wine that you can buy. It's gotta be everything else. So it's always the intangible but it's things. it's P&P, right? It's patience and practicality. You it, have both those things, Eugene. Look, what I have is patience, but what, I, what I'm challenged by is that I think every day is my last. And, I, and, and that is something from being a kid and that's a problematic thing. And even how successful you are, you always think that every day is your birthday party. And when I, when I walk into catch, I think every day is my birthday party. I don't think anyone's coming. So I get up every morning with that stress on my back I and I try to find that sense of urgency I, in young think, people, I think, cannot. I think being patient and lacking entitlement is very easy to balance both. You can't have entitlement in, in, in the no business shit. that you do. You absolutely have to realize you that- you have customers, you can't have entitlement. Absolutely. I and mean, we're, That's the singular mistake I see. Here's what I realize. You walk into catch, I don't wait for you to come say hello to me if I'm sitting at the table. I jump the fuck up and I go to you to say hi to your table. Yeah. And now the people who think they ever get to an ownership position think life gets easier. I don't understand that, why they think they're gonna have less problems when they become successful. You work for them. Oh, I work for everybody. A hundred thousand percent. I work bro. for everybody. The only people I don't work for are my parents because they love me no matter what. Beyond that, like I gotta perform and I gotta earn. And I know that I know that going into it. Look, I've had some amazing years in the success of catch and the success of Rumble, but we've had some bad years. We've closed some places. I'm not ashamed to talk about that stuff, it's by great. the way. I love when but my those failures. <laughs> those I failures. I hope empathy fails so Trouty and they can get real jobs. <laughs> like I'm pumped. Like I'm I love losing. It's part of the equation. You know what's It's funny? not losing though. It's of just course. it's not real Listen, losing. But it is losing, except you're willing to learn from that loss. It's That's losing. Right. A business going out of business is losing. That's right. What it's you're not saying growth. is what you're saying is in the macro, it doesn't have to be the it's not the end. No, and a lot of times you think it is. So for anybody who's ever lost, it's not real loss. Eugene, you know where you just went that I keep thinking about all the time? Something I've been thinking about a ton. Sports. Right? Kobe Bryant. Paul Pierce, who I hate. You know, um, anybody. He's so great on ESPN. Anybody, whoever, anybody. Yeah. Any great athlete in any sport, right? Mariano Rivera, Darrell Rivas, I'll use, like, nonetheless, whatever. Ready? Here's how sports works. You go into the league, right? It's completely based on merit if you're good enough, 19, 20. What, if you're good enough, you're good enough. You play your whole career, you become a fucking legend. You are a Hall of Famer. You're towards the end of your career, 34, young, by the way, 35, 37. Nobody on the field cares that you're going to the Hall of Fame. Actually, let's use boxing. Every great boxer, pretty much, except for Floyd and a couple of other people, get their fucking ass. Do you know who Muhammad Ali lost to? Trevor Burbick. Trevor Burbick is the last person to beat Muhammad Ali. Beat his ass. Not Larry Holmes, like everybody thinks, because they're not educated. Trevor Burbick beat the fuck out of Muhammad Ali, right? You know why? Because in sports you get to see it happen, which is you're only as good as your last at bat. That's right. In business, for some reason, back to your point, people get big, they had a great career, and for some reason those motherfuckers think they get to relax, but the market, the customer, they're Trevor Burbick. It wasn't Trevor Burbick's job, and I think he went in the Bahamas, look it up, I think it was somewhere outside the US, I think it's the Bahamas. It wasn't Trevor Burbick's job in 1982, 1983? No, it's out Tyson. No, no, Mike Tyson knocked out Trevor Burbick. Trevor Burbick beat Muhammad Ali. Go look at Muhammad Ali's career. Look, Google Muhammad Ali's last Let's fight. Let's assume it's a fact. It is a fucking fact. <laughs> it wasn't Trevor Burbick's job to go into that ring and say, Muhammad Ali, you're a legend, let me lay down for you. He beat his fucking ass, right? Unanimous decision. That's Ali right. was 39, Burbick was 27. Right. Because Muhammad Ali needs to know he needs to get into a different ring. Correct. He needs to pick a different and career. I have no idea why all these entrepreneurs running around here build a big business and then think they can rest on the laurel because a young lion is coming to take your shit. That's right. It's funny, people want to get regular jobs, they have structure and now that's like poo-pooed as a bad thing. But man, it's, it's hard, push yourself every day. 
Get up in the morning and say, if you don't have to be at work at 9 a.m., do you go? Do you go to lunch a little longer? Do you hang oh. out a little longer? And then how much money can you lose in five minutes? Andy and I were in LA on business the other day, and after a meeting that lasted 20 minutes, which I dictated 19 of, the other crew went to lunch for an hour and a half, and we went back to our car to our next meeting, and I was making fun of it, and Andy just lives right here. And it was like funny, like he was like, yeah, I don't even know what the real world looks like. like that's exactly right. I, LA, by the way, is a meeting pre-lunch and a meeting post-lunch, and that's about it. And that's the two meetings in the day and lunch in between to break it up before you end the day. And that's, that's the LA life. But again, entrepreneurship has this sexy vocabulary to it. it sucks, but it's lonely go, as well. go do it. Every go, single go person it. here isn't the last line of defense. Last line of defense sucks. There's nobody else to pay Have great partners. Shit. That's what I would say to anybody. Have great partners. What's your question of the day? I wrote it down I so I wouldn't did. mess it up. Uh, what's the one business you believe could be elevated by an experience? Something whack, something that needs to be like disrupted. What, what's something that people do every single day that needs to be disrupted? I wanna know, because I wanna do it. <laughs> I love it. I wanna Appreciate do it. it. Thanks for being on, brother. Love Appreciate you. it, thank you so much for your time. Great to see all you young people make me look old and feel old. You all got great hair, by the way. Really, <laughs> oh, everyone does. Here. Thanks for being on. Thank you, appreciate it. You guys keep watching. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my video on YouTube. I wanted to jump in here at the end because I'm working on a ridiculously important project for me and I have a funny feeling you can help. If you drink wine at all or know anybody that drinks wine at all, please go to empathywines.com right now and sign up for a subscription. Whether it's a three pack, whether it's a six pack, or whether it's a whole case of each for the year. If you drink 36 bottles of wine a year or give away 36 bottles of wine a year, please sign up for Club empathy. This project means the world to me. I could really use your support.